Oh my goodness, this is not good at all. Right in my hand. I think I can feel the barb like right there. Yeah. Alright. Okay. Open your hand a bit. I'm gonna try to hit it. Okay? Okay. One, two, three. Ah! We are driving down some sketchy back roads. There's like just endless lakes around Kenora. I will not fish them all in my lifetime, but uh, we're going on a musky mission. I got Brandon behind the camera. This time Brandon's gonna be fishing too. Brandon's never caught a musky before. The fish of 10,000 casts. So we're gonna try to get Brandon a musky today. We're gonna probably do a little head to head challenge, but uh, hopefully we don't get stuck. She's getting narrow, boys. Buckle up. This is why I like not having a brand new truck. Oh, that, that being said, if someone wants to give me a brand new truck, I will absolutely take it. But my truck's seen a few things. It's got like 200,000 kilometers on it. It's, it's, it's beaten up a bit. And I don't worry about stuff like this. I know people that have new vehicles and they're worried about taking it on bush trails. But is that the trail we have to take? Yep. Oh, boy. All that matters is you get in. Getting out doesn't, that's not important. Getting in, catching muskies, that's the important part. How beautiful is this? Unreal. We're gonna go catch some skis. Stop, 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 stop. Oh, this is gonna be a good day. I love having two kayaks now because having one kayak, it was great. Don't get me wrong, but now being able to adventure with other people, going to some of these back lakes. But previously this season, I had been stacking my kayaks on top of each other in the back of the vehicle, which I didn't really love. Now I got the little Princess Auto homemade trailer. Uh, Princess Auto meaning they have like axles and tires and all that stuff to make homemade trailers, um, which is perfect for something like this. These kayaks aren't heavy. I don't need to go out and buy some big industrial one. So. Uh, yeah, Princess Auto sponsors this channel and uh, want to give them some love. So if, if you guys are wanting to build a homemade trailer or need any of those type of accessories, hit up Princess Auto. Um, yeah, anyways, we got Brandon behind me pedaling. We're going to the far end of the lake, a big main lake point, kind of where I want to start. Um, this lake has a lot of weed growth, but I think it's probably mostly dead. So yeah, we're going to start on the rocks. Um, we're gonna kind of be doing bucktails and headbanger, headbanger baits, as you've seen. This is the tail, I think this is the five inch, six inch. I don't even know. These small headbangers are gonna be perfect, I think. I'm not sure if the fish will be as active to fall into the figure eight, just cause it is like November, uh, end of October, but um, we might get some figure eight action. I'm gonna be wearing the head cam. Brown's gonna be wearing a head cam. We're gonna get to fishing very soon. What do you want to start with? Bucktail or headbanger? I'll go with the headbanger. Okay, I'll throw a little bucktail. Okay. What's uh, what's the wager? Uh, two, two, one. That's not a wager. Oh, oh, oh wager. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, let's bet paycheck. A paycheck? <laughs> double or nothing? Either you get yeah. double time this week or nothing. If I catch more muskies than you today, then time and a half for a week. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this just won't end well. No. Um, how, about, how about dinner? Okay, you can you can buy me dinner. Right. Cook me dinner, whatever you want. As long as it's McDonald's. All right. Sounds good to me. That's the one. That's the one. Perfect. All right. So we're gonna be using uh, yeah, that's like a, a jerk bait, a spending style bait. Uh, I'll be using a bucktail. I th I think we can still catch one on a bucktail, like a small bucker tail, smaller spinner. Um, we're each gonna be wearing head cams. If a fish comes out, we'll we'll pull the big camera out. But we each got a net. Um, but I'm just excited. We got like just it, when I saw this day in the fork, is I'm like, we need we need to go fishing. We need to go kayak fishing one last time. And that's what I love about kayak fishing. It gets you to these lakes that you can't launch the big boat in. So the first annual J versus Brando Musky World Cup. We've got about eight hours to catch as many muskies as possible. Here we go. Here we go. All right, this is what I'm using. 
A little Booker tail, bucktail, white with the silver blade. Single treble will be easy to deal with. We need to unhook fish. And we're standing. All right, we're rolling the World Muskie Cup. I'm gonna try to steer with my ankles. It's a little insider trick for you. All right, we are fishing. We are on the spot. We beat Brandon to the good spot. I'm giving you a one musky head start, I've decided. What? I've got the power <laughs> drive. All right. Currently is one to nothing for Brandon. You're that not confident in me catching a musky? All right, we are casting the bucktail. We're just fishing shoreline. Nothing too crazy. There is a rocky point here. I don't know exactly where it sticks out, but I'm thinking these fish will still be shallow. I think I've told this story before on my channel. My buddy Sean Landsman is a fisheries biologist and he's done a bunch of studies on muskies with tagging, like acoustic tagging I think it's called, where you can actually follow where the muskie goes. Anyways, I asked him when I was fishing with him a couple summers ago, I said, so Sean, what's like the coolest thing that you learned while tagging these muskies that people might not know? And he said, people don't realize how shallow muskies can stay into the fall time. He said, there's been times in November where they've seen muskies in like a foot or two of water. I'm like, wow, that's super cool. And I've heard stories, my buddy Darcy Cox, one of the biggest muskies he caught in the fall time, he accidentally trolled over a reef way shallower than he wanted to go and then caught, I think it was like a 54 and a half inch muskie. So muskies do stay shallow. Yes, they pull out deeper and a lot of people will troll for them, but you can definitely catch them shallow. Oh, we're on, we're on. Yes, that did not take long. Oh, ooh, first musky. First musky. Come on. Yes. Yo, Brando! Fighting pretty good for a little fish. Oh, muskies are so cool. Well, we'll just scoop it like this, maybe. Yes, we got him. Oh, don't roll, baby. Even with a smaller fish like this, it is nice to have that big net. All right, we got Brandon over here. Camera's been rolling for 12 minutes on my head cam, and like half of that was talking, so five minutes in, and we got a muskie. It is now 1-1 since I gave Brandon a head start. Just keep that in mind. Oh, muskies are so cool. Even when they're little, they are cool fish. Beautiful sun glistening in the Old Town kayak and we're catching muskies. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> what a beautiful release. Every cast I'm doing something called the figure eight where I do a big circle, but essentially I'm reeling the lure right to the rod tip and then doing that formation in the water and so often muskies will follow right to the kayak or the boat or whatever you're fishing out of. But that's probably the biggest difference between them and pike. Pike, you can catch them in the figure eight. I've caught pike in the figure eight, but more likely they just kind of spook away beside the boat. Muskies just don't care and they feel like the bait's cornered so they'll come right beside the boat. And you can catch them, catch them right there. Ooh, there's one, saw one. You saw one? Yeah, it just darted away. Nice. Looks pretty good. Ooh. Yep. On? We're on. We're hooked up. Musky number two. How's she feel? She's small and she's not hooked great. Get in the basket. They're still like. <laughs> Number two. He is a baby. Probably one of the smallest muskies I've caught, but I'm not complaining. My muskie count is going up dramatically this year. There you go. Golden, beautiful. Look at the colors on that one. 
anyways. Some nice rocks where that fish came off. You can see it's just a little rock here on this point. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Can't even get set. Just racking them. Oh, baby. All right. Another muskie. Number three. Little guy, but man, they're fun. Cool. She gone. Oh, fish on. <laughs> My jag is so loose. Go, oh, baby. Got him. <laughs> Brandon, we did it. First muskie. There we go. Nice, buddy. Good job. Hey, I do not care about the size. Muskies are cool. Any size. They're so cool. All right. It's like catching a 12 inch walleye. <laughs> well, kind of. Kind All right. Of. He's, he looks like he's just going to thrash as soon as you let him go. All right. You good? Yep. Yeah. Boom. Let's go. Good Boom. job, buddy. What is it? Uh, three to two? Three to two. Four muskies caught. And we. What time is it? We've only been fishing for what? <laughs> An hour? An hour? Not even. Four muskies? That's not bad. It's for a couple good. hack job muskie anglers like us. When you take a kid fishing like Brandon, it's so important to give him action because if you take him to a place that's tough to catch muskies, He'll never want to musky fish again, but now you're just like, you know, dipping your feet into the water, entering the world of musky fishing. We'll go to a tougher lake and, and experience some pain yet, but uh, just to, you know, learn what muskies, you know, uh, what type of structure they hold on, how they react to both sides, you know, figure eights and stuff. It's, it's cool to, uh, to do the backcountry thing sometimes. And uh, it's not all about catching big fish. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> so we're at four muskies. My best musky day ever is seven muskies with Mr. Kevin Newfelt, You've seen him in a couple of videos, a couple hunting ones. And Aaron Weeb, Mr. Uncut Angling. And we were fishing on Lake of the Woods, had a seven musky day. And that was actually the day that Aaron asked me if I wanted to start filming Uncut Angling with him. Came back after catching seven muskies, feeling good. It was three days before school was supposed to start actually. I was gonna go to photography school in Winnipeg. And this was like my last hurrah fishing trip before I went to, went to photography college. And Aaron pulled out his laptop and he showed me a pilot episode of Uncut Angling. Showed it to me and I was like, that's awesome. Like I've always thought Aaron would be really good in front of the camera. And then he's like, hey, so do you wanna drop out of school and start filming this show with me? We didn't have a name for it at the time. All I knew was I wanted to be involved in the fishing world in some way, whether in front of the camera, behind the camera. And I remember calling my parents that evening and being like, hey, I'm not going to school. And they were very supportive. They said, yeah, you can always go back to school if you wanna follow your dream and do this with Aaron, you should do it. So, I mean, my parents were just so supportive. They made that decision so easy. And uh, like a week after September of 2011, Aaron and I hit the road and that was the start of Uncut Angling. Sleeping in the truck, sleeping in hotels all over Manitoba. And I remember uploading the first video to YouTube and it getting like 400 views and we just lost our minds. How is there 400 people watching this video? called Unstumping Crappies. And that was where it all kind of began. So anyways, that's what's tied to my most musky day. Oh. Okay, that was definitely a fish. I just got clobbered. That was a terrible hook set. Oh, right on the moose nest. guarantee that was a fish. If I've learned anything from working with Jay, 
It's that moose nest are good. <laughs> so I think what I'm gonna try and do is cast parallel with the shore. Just maximize my opportunity if they're, I mean, it kind of seems like they're pretty tight to shore from the ones that Jay caught and the one that I caught. So I'm just gonna stay parallel to shore. Just chucking a winding with a bucktail. It's pretty basic, the, the headbanger that Brandon's using. You can definitely, you know, work it with some pauses and stuff and straight retrieve, troll, whatever else. This is pretty much just chuck and wind. Pretty idiot proof. And the hookup ratio is really good. Jay can go, oh, fish on, fish on. Sorry, I was not ready. I was not prepared. We are hooked up. Well, that's actually a nice one. Or nicer one than what we've been catching. Oh boy, he's barely hooked too. I'm sorry for my hook sets today. We are hooked up. Oh baby. Oh my goodness. Oh baby. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Don't shake those hooks. Oh my goodness. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Got him. Oh, baby. Musky number two. Ouch. I just got a hook in my hand. All right, we've got to go. Oh my goodness, this is not good at all. I'll show you guys there. I have a hook. Right in my hand. Not good. Yeah, it's just past the barb. Oh, in a bad spot? Uh, I don't know. Are we gonna just cut it? Are we gonna be able to push it through? I'm not too sure. I've never got a hook up before. Oh boy. <laughs> it's pet, yeah. I should have, uh, I wish that, uh, yeah, nah, it's, I, I should have left is, pliers with it you. It is what it is. Brutality. All right. You just crushed it. Nice. Musky for Brandon. Only cost him his thumb. <laughs> there we go. So it depends on your what you want to do. I mean, there's a couple options. There's a trick that involves using braided line and pulling it out. I've never done it before. Um, I wouldn't feel comfortable doing it until I have a chance to Google it. So we might have to go out there. Okay. I don't have a good, have you tried pulling it out already? No. Do you want to try pulling it out with pliers? Do you yeah. want to get a nice picture first while it's in the thumb? Sure. Like, if you can push it all the way past the barb through, then we can I mean, back it, through the skin. Like, yeah, yeah, like, get it out on the other side. I don't know if we can do that necessarily. Um, the fishing line trick is probably... is probably the easiest. So we take I mean, because it's right... The, the bend of the hook is, like, right there, so the barb's probably a good... I don't know. Here, I'm going to put this I mean, camera away. Yeah, I don't want you to... Okay. I'm going to cut it here. You okay? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there you go. I don't know if we'll be able, I don't know if that just screwed it for pulling that, for the pulling trick now. I might have actually been a dumb thing to do, but let's see. I don't want to pull. Okay. I can pull if you want. I can do a quick rip. It might hurt. So if I went right now, if I had a good angle on it and I just went, pff, that's probably our best chance, but it might not work. It's best if I do it hard and do it quick, but you can also try to do it yourself. So it's up to you. I'll give you a shot. Do we have something that I can like wrap around it or something to stop bleeding? Once it uh, comes like there's out? buffs and stuff. Yeah, it's not going to be gushing blood. Okay. It'll be bleeding a bit. I think I can feel the barb like right there. Yeah. All right. Okay. Open your hand a bit. I'm going to try to hit it. Okay. Okay. One, two, three. Ah, I'm sorry. Mm. Do you want to give it another go? I can try. Okay, just look away. Got it. Nice. Okay. Nice. <laughs> there it is. You're a hero. Okay, let's get you a buff. I had buffs in my underwater housing. I'm glad it came out. Did that hurt? Are you going to cry? I'm not going to cry. <laughs> I'm oh. not that kind of guy. Dude, you're lucky you got that hook out of the muskie. Was your hand hooked to the muskie for a while? No. 
I got the hook out. As I jabbed the hook out, it came in my finger. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh. Three, three. <laughs> Man. That could have gone a lot worse. You have $10 falling out of your pocket. Do I actually? Oh, wow. It must be nice to be rich. Oh, that's just yours. That's the, just the Tim's. <laughs> your money oh i'm sorry for leaving you around the corner no like, it's all good i uh i was like oh whatever like he, I, I was i forgot <laughs> that you didn't have pliers i knew you had all the tackle back there but I, we have two pairs of long pliers i brought specifically we got a thumbnail that's the important part yeah that's right let's see if we can catch a musky gave brandon that shoreline because it'll give him a nice drift with those with the you know pedal style you just want to keep in mind what the wind's doing and if it can set you up for a drift, obviously being motorized like I am, it's a little easier to work against the wind or sideways with the wind and everything. But when using the pedal pedal version, especially if you want to be if using the pedal version, especially if you want to be, you know, standing and fishing, then uh, you want to use the wind to your advantage. Right now, I'm keeping my motor on a low speed. I'm keeping it on one and a half, and I'm actually using my ankles to steer. So check this out. I got my ankles, and as I lift my legs. It's actually turning that rudder on the back so I don't have to deal with the remote so I can keep both hands on the rod. So it's, you know, good for subtle adjustments, keep it at a low speed and, uh, yeah. We've not seen a muskie in a while since Brandon got hooked in the finger. Ooh, either I bumped a weed or a fish just pushed me. There we go! It's been a while. I was just saying since Brandon got hooked. Nice fish. I'm gonna spot lock us. I did spot lock us. It's a nicer fish. Oh nope. All right. Let's see if we can do this. Let's see if we can get back in the lead. Nice. All right. The wind is picking up. The muskies are still snapping. This one puts me back in the lead. Number six for the muskie count for today. We're gonna slide it between us right here. She gone? Yeah, that little booker tail is doing it. It just rips by their face. This is more of like a a summertime technique using something like this. We're kind of just beating the bank and catching fish. Fish on. Yep. Nice. Stan. <laughs> All right, musky number seven. We've now tied my best day for most muskies, maybe not the biggest, but we're having a blast in the kayaks. Pretty cool. <laughs> uh, good times. So as far as gear I'm using, rod, reel, I'm using some sort of Abu bait caster. This is a Revo AL-FHS. I don't know, just like a bass or pike sized. Um, this is 40 pound braid, so a little bit lighter. This is more of a pike setup. This is an eight foot swim bait rod, a little more of a moderate action. I think it's a medium heavy or heavy. And uh, this leader's heavy. It's probably 130 pound floral leader to my booker tail. So, I mean, I kind of know this lake probably doesn't have a giant muskie in it. So I'm, I'm pretty confident with that little bit lighter gear. Um, it's just nicer for casting smaller baits. Brandon's been working with me for a year now and he's been absolutely crushing it. I think November is our one year anniversary. He messaged me asking for an internship. Little did he know he was gonna get a full-time job. Yeah, ooh, that's a nicer one. Maybe it's not nicer, but I saw him eat it. That was the first one I've seen eat. Oh, so good, so good. Just saw a big flash of white. 
Wow. So cool seeing him eat. Just came up behind him. All right, guys. That is musky number eight for the team. So good. Moose nest right there, Canadian moose nest. So the moose will actually build that nest, you know, leading up to the rut. And then that's where it'll lay its eggs. Typically like two to three eggs has to sit on top of it for, you know, a couple of weeks. But uh, yeah, you do not want to come up to a moose sitting on one of those nests. So they are very territorial and aggressive. So just a word to uh, my American friends that are coming up. Just be respectful of the moose nest. That's all I ask. Fish on. Got him. No, don't got him. <laughs> Number nine. All right, here's musky number nine. There he goes. Well guys, we got nine muskies. We are so close to double digits. I think we're gonna do it. Yeah, it's like 2.30 in the afternoon. I think we start at 9.30. So we're having quite the day. This is so fun. What a good way to end off the season if this is our last time on, a, on the soft water. Oh, no, <laughs> on the figure eight. Oh, come on. That was crazy. Oh, there's a musky right behind me. Oh! I can see him. There he is. He's still there. Oh, come on. Look at this, guys. This is so cool. Come on. How cool was that? Yep. Number 10. Come on. Stay on, baby. Stay on. She's not big. Quick. Quick. <laughs> nice. Number 10. We set out with a mission to get Brandon his first muskie. We did that and then some. Brandon also got his first barbed hook in the hand. And we caught 10 muskies from the Old Town kayaks. Not big, so much fun. Brandon's floating away. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm gonna bring you back in. Right. Okay. Brandon, was it worth getting a hook in the finger to catch 10 muskies? 100%. 100%. 100%. It was worth it. 110%. Not even a question. Guys, such a good day with Brandon. Brandon does so much behind the scenes. He doesn't get nearly enough credit. Editing, dealing with my crap on the daily. But anyways, here we are catching some muskies. Huge shout out to Brandon on his first muskie. And uh, don't forget to wear your life jackets and just enjoy the rest of this beautiful fall weather. Thanks for watching, guys.